Lake Michigan plays a huge role in the region and almost everything we do, from recreation to beach tourism and the local economy. <coughs> but Lake Michigan and its important aquatic ecosystems are changing fast, and we're just starting to feel it. Right now, Storm Team 8 is looking beneath the surface to investigate what's out there in the waters and deep below. Our meteorologists are taking a deep dive into some of the changes we've never seen before and how they'll impact life as we know it. Lake Effect, a special Wood TV 8 presentation, starts right now. Lake Michigan. We call it a lake. It is far more like the ocean than it is like a lake. Direct visitor spending was around $27 billion. It's global. People fly into Michigan to experience Lake Michigan and all it has to offer. Lake Michigan is also not just a beautiful tourism destination, it's an economic engine. The lake creates one of the most diverse agricultural belts in the world. It's home to a healthy hunting and fishing industry and pulls 125 million visitors each year. But the lake can change in a flash. Locals see it day to day, but now scientists are noticing it decade to decade. So what's just a cycle and what's something more? The answer lies in the wake. Building along the lake is a dangerous game, a gamble where the house doesn't always win. Water levels, they were so high in the 80s that houses fell in. The all-time record highest water levels on Lake Michigan were recorded in 1986, but we saw many of the monthly highest water levels smashed again when the water rose in 2020. Data from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers shows that the lake does cycle, but unnervingly, there's no clear trend. Sometimes it will sit for a decade before a sudden surge, like what happened in 2020. Today, this is all that remains. A sheer drop along a bare bluff now littered with debris. You can see where the front door once stood, but the home had to be demolished. This is one of just many casualties along the ever-growing lake. I would say that it was similar to the rise that led to the peak in the 80s. That was about a five-foot rise. This was about a six-foot rise. And this last rise was all about high levels of precipitation in the basin. Michigan is trending warmer, windier, and wetter. Surprisingly, this isn't expected to create an increase in water level rise. The reason why? Less ice in winter allows for more evaporation. Right now, there's barely enough ice on Lake Michigan for a mixed drink. So are the seawalls installed made in vain? Science says no. While it's becoming increasingly harder to know when the lake will rise, one thing is certain, eventually it will. The lake's influence on storms is more complex. And in the spring of the year, you would think the water's really cold, it's going to decay or kill the thunderstorms as they cross, but it's actually opposite the case. Typically this time of year, we have much more dynamic systems. Often with early season storms, we see them remain elevated. That means they survive in an air mass that's completely separate from the lake surface. This is why some of Michigan's most powerful tornadoes have touched down in spring. And there's kind of a, a cold dome or uh, a mini area of high pressure over the lake and the storms don't feel it and ride right over the top. In the summer, storms are impacted by Lake Michigan, so slightly warmer water temperatures could mean slightly stronger storms, but it likely wouldn't be a huge, overly impressive impact. Something that could see a big spike, drowning. <laughs> Lake Michigan is the deadliest of the Great Lakes. And I think a lot of people don't understand how powerful the waves can be. More people are killed in Lake Michigan than die from any other weather hazard in our state. The reason why Lake Michigan is so deadly is because of the strong currents. We have the longest north to south shoreline out of the Great Lakes, and storms usually come in from the west, kicking up those currents. Warmer, wetter, and windier could create a rise in drowning deaths. 
And when we have the, the seas, when we have cool, calm, cloudy days, we tend to have less people at the beach, so we tend to have less drownings. When we have the W's, the warm, windy weekends with waves, then we tend to see more people at the beach and we tend to see more drownings and, and rescues happen. In addition to waves, swimmers will have to watch for something new, a growing problem. With warm weather continuing into October, algal blooms have popped up in Muskegon Lake for the third time this year. Algal blooms are on the rise, especially on inland lakes. While some are harmless, others can cause illness or even reported deaths in pets. We still don't have a good understanding at a scientific community as to why some blooms are toxic and why some are not with the same exact species. In fact, in the lake, we could have the species blooming in two parts of the lake, one's toxic and one's not. Algae blooms used to happen in Lake Michigan in the 40s and 50s. That was due to a lot of bad stuff being dumped into the lake. The Clean Water Act in the 70s changed all that. A trend towards wetter weather means more runoff, fertilizer from farm fields, and salt from roads. Just 15 years ago, we discovered a uh, harmful cyanobacterial species here that was never there before. It's, uh, it usually occurs in Florida and you know subtropical estuaries. It's the warmer waters and all the you know saltier conditions we're making by road salting that gives it temporary temporary refugias. New studies show surface water on Lake Michigan trending about 11 hundredths of a degree Fahrenheit warmer each decade. And you think, oh, 11 hundredths of a degree per decade, that's not a big deal, but ecosystems are fragile and it can make quite a difference. On inland lakes, harmful blooms are expected to become more common. Lake Michigan will likely continue to steer clear. So what's the secret? The answer comes with a catch. Coming up next. Zebra mussels, quagga mussels have changed the system so much that it's impacting the whitefish. We crack open the direct effect quagga mussels are having on our big fish and spectacular wrecks when our Storm Team 8 special returns.